All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We are going on a 15 mile round trip little excursion here. And you know, I've been enjoying the camera so much, I figured I'd put on my face, film a video, and hopefully the audio is uh, acceptable. My last video was the first one uh, using this brand new setup, so of course there's always a learning curve. And I didn't realize that by default, this camera has a very low uh, sensitivity for external mics. So I went ahead and boosted it by six decibels. Hopefully that fixes it, and then in post I could play around with it a little bit more to uh, get it spot on. But I gotta say, overall, the image quality and the sound, the sound is key. Overall, they're both pretty nice with this new setup, if I do say so myself. Ugh. Is somebody beeping? The light was green for like two seconds. Welcome to Jersey. But okay, I've been thinking a lot about my uh, my build, my upcoming build. What is what 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 is this, dude? This is for me. Don't they know this is the bike lane? Gotta love that little horn, by the way. So yeah, my upcoming bike build, I just made a video kind of laying out my plan. This of course is the Crooked Bike as the foundation. Uh, my new battery did come in the mail a couple days ago. 60 volts, 19.2 amp hour. Super excited to uh, get that up and running. The last piece I'm waiting for is the controller, the brains of the bike, so I can hook it all up together. So I haven't used the battery yet, but after my preliminary inspection of it, I think it's going to do its job just fine. It is pretty huge. Uh, it's like double the height of most uh, down tube style batteries, but that just means more capacity and more range. So I'm all about that. It also has no branding on it because I customized it. And speaking of the customizations, let me tell you guys what I did to this battery. So I think the biggest one is the fast charger. By default, most down tube batteries, at least if you browse Amazon, they come with like a three amp charger maybe a 4 amp. Some of them even have a 2 amp charger. And considering how massive this battery is, that is just not going to cut it. A 3 amp battery charger would take like 6-7 hours to fully charge it. And with my active lifestyle, that would just not be compatible. My previous uh, build, the 72 volt mountain bike, that had a 5 amp fast charger and that was, that was great. After a ride, I can plug it in for two hours and then I could take it out again. So yeah, that was one of the customizations. A fast charger, five amps. The next major one was the discharge port. I customized that to a female XT60 because the Frankenrunner controller has a male XT60. Wait, I'm going straight here? Never mind. Yeah, so it's important to get the right connector. You could find adapters if need be, but ideally, plug and play is what you want. And then the final modification, what else did I do to this thing? Uh, oh yeah, it's 60 volts. It's pretty hard to find this style of battery at 60 volts. If you go on Amazon, which is how I began my journey, the maximum you're going to see is 52 volts at 20 amp hours. So I got this with 60 volts. 19.2 amp hours that was the highest capacity that they offered so i snagged it so that's the battery it's the beating heart of any e-bike build it's more important than the motor potentially even the bike frame because it's going to dictate how much power you have the range the usability its capabilities so i think this battery is going to be a solid choice but there are a lot of unknowns with this bike because of the unconventional approach i'm taking to it I mean, the thing that you usually do is just buy a full complete kit and then you know everything works together. But I kind of did it the hard way. I'm buying all the individual parts and the parts are high quality. That's why I'm doing this. I can customize it to get it exactly the way I want. But there's just a lot of unknowns in that process. So I'm sure that as I put this bike together, there's going to be problems and things that I overlooked that are going to surface themselves. And that's part of the reason why I'm making the video to uh, document it, show you guys how it's done or how it's not done, and we can all learn from it. Man, it is so hot out. 
Gotta keep moving for the airflow. But to give you guys a tangible example here, I already discovered one pitfall, and that's before I even put the bike together. And that's that the battery, it does have a key lock, but all that does is lock it to the base plate, which is good. So, you know, nobody can just come and steal the battery off the bike. That's always a positive. However, there's a separate switch that you just flip and that turns the battery on and off. So if somebody wants, they can just come up to my bike when it's locked up somewhere and turn it on. And that's potentially not a good scenario. So I just sent an email to Grin Technology. They are the ones that make the Franken Runner controller. And I asked if there's any way that I could use a, a key ignition to, you know, turn on and off the bike. But after looking at the manual, I'm not sure if that's possible, unfortunately. And that's a shame. It's not a deal breaker, but a key ignition just for safety reasons is uh, something you want. And that is something that I overlooked when uh, buying all these parts. What is going on here? Man, thank God I'm on a bike. Whoa. A little bit, a little bit sketch. So yeah, getting back on topic here, there are definitely going to be a lot of uh, surprises when I put this build together. And I'm just hoping everything works out, uh, you know, good enough. It should though. Oh my gosh, bro. Yeah, I mean, I know for a fact that the controller and the motor are compatible with one another. There is a software application. You have to program the controller when you first get it. So I guess I'll show you guys what that's all about. Because that's how you teach the controller of what motor it's connected to. Because with this Frankenrunner controller, it's not just plug and play with any motor. You do have to physically like input what kind of motor it's connected to so that way you can uh, properly function. But from what I was told, the voltage is plug and play. It can automatically recognize that. Man, it is... I should not have come out during rush hour. It was a bad idea. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but I also picked up the Cycle Analyst display. Ideally, I wanted like a standard display from the Fang, but apparently they have limited functionality on the system. So I just went ahead, spent the $100 on this ancient looking display because at least I know it's going to work. So yeah, if you guys want to see how this build progresses, of course, subscribe to the channel and I will give you guys all the updates. So far, the only thing I have to fix or find a solution for is uh, a key ignition that works with this. Because to me, that's kind of a must. Let me know if you guys have a key ignition for your bike. I know this one does. A lot of pre-built systems do. But custom builds? Maybe it's not as widespread. Well, here we go. That's the end of my bike ride for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. You guys know we appreciate a like, subscribe. Oh my God, it's so hot. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it real.